Hello everyone and thanks for tuning into Stratwatch episode 2. So we launched this new feature here on the channel last week, a specific video just looking at all the latest developments stratosphere wise. And uh, this is your ep episode 2, your second installment. We're going to be uh, bringing you up to date what's going on in the stratosphere over North Pole at 10 8 pm. We'll have a look at forecast data as well. So I should get on that for you in a second, just to say that the first video today was our 6 pm UK weather forecast. We're going to be live streaming at 6 pm. We'll live stream our 10 to 14 day. Then straight after that, we'll have the fifth installment of Chris's Countdown, epic Wednesday of content here on the channel. Please like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. Right, we're going to start off with the uh, JMA temperature at 10 8 So this shows what's currently going on versus the average. So the grey line is trend line for this uh, time of the year. Black line shows how temperatures have been performing at 10 8 previous season, starting off in September, very close to long-term averages. That's where we are right now. So we are a little bit under par, the temperature at 10 8 pm, a little bit under that grey line, not a big deviation. We're hovering somewhere around minus 75, minus 76. A little tick up has actually taken place over the past couple of days. So yeah, a little bit, a little bit on the car on the average side, but but not especially so. Go a little bit low down to 30 8 pm, which is closer to the transfer. Then perhaps, but then perhaps the temperature is a little bit colder. So again, we're somewhere in the mid uh, minus 70, somewhere around minus 75. At this time of the year, we should be somewhere around there, probably around minus 72, something like that. So we are a little bit colder than average there. Uh, at, uh, at uh, 38 pm, just as it closer to the troposphere. But whether it's 10 or 38 pm, to be honest, it's not a particularly big deviation. So, temperature wise, nothing overly dramatic happening at the moment. Let's see what the GFS is forecasting for the next couple of weeks. We'll see signs of an SSW. Let's have a look. So, uh, yeah, these uh, blue colors are the cold temperatures at 10 pm in the stratosphere over the Arctic and over the uh, North Pole as well. You can see that the temperature is hovering somewhere close to minus 76 there over the uh, North Pole, which is, of course, we've just seen. It's a little bit colder than average. As we run through, not a, no particular, bit, particularly big deviation. Again, over the next couple of weeks, temperatures continue to hover somewhere between around minus 72 and at minus 76. Maybe the coldest temperature has been pushed out a little bit more towards the um, northern part of Scandinavia. We do go down to minus 80 there, close to Svalbard. Uh, remember, this is the strategy at 10 8 not on the surface. Over uh, North Pole itself, that's lifting back up closer to around minus 72, which will be close to average for the time of the year. We go beyond that into the latter stages of uh, November. And again, temperatures somewhere there between minus 72, minus 76. Again, it's not a big deviation but we are seeing there. Um, now, we're getting to a very extreme range. There is some size of some warming taking place over Europe and into Siberia there. Uh, that is not an SSW. It's nowhere near an SSW, actually. That is a very modest warming, but a slight warming is taking place there over uh, Russia in particular. Uh, and that perhaps just uh, causing a little bit of a displacement of the polar vortex at its roots over toward the Canadian, uh, over toward the Greenland side, I should say, of, uh, of the North Pole. Again, see over the pole itself, temperature hovering somewhere between around minus 70 to minus 76, something like that. So on the temperature scale, if we go back to 10 HPA, if we get to about minus 72, that's where you would expect to be, really, once you're at the end of uh, November into the beginning of December at 10 HPA. So I don't imagine this grey line over next couple of weeks is going to be doing anything overly dramatic really it's perhaps going to be a little bit under par and then by months then perhaps reaching back closer to the grey line but i don't think we're going to see it doing anything particularly dramatic there at 10 hpa well let's have a look at some extended forecast data so uh, this is the latest ecm uh, run in terms of the temperature anomaly at 10 hpa over the uh, north pole so um this of course is the uh, north pole just here and they've got wider Arctic circle around there. And then we've got mid latitude through here. This is for week one. Takes us from the 20th, 27th of November. 
So on the Greenland uh, and Atlantic and Northern European side of uh, the North Pole, the temperature next week is actually going to be slightly above average at 10 HP near or just slightly cold and average on the uh, on the Eurasian side, on the, on the Canadian to Siberian side of uh, the North Pole next week. Again, these are big deviations, though, but very, very close to average. Uh, that's week two. So a bit of a warming starting to take place. Forecast is correct for week two. 27th of November to 4th of December. Again, on the Atlantic and uh, Northern European side, somewhat unusually so. Um, and that might stretch around onto the Siberian side, as we've just seen. That's the modest warming that's showing up here, I would imagine. So that warming just there, the share is picking up on that a little bit, I think. And uh, has a bit further northward, though, maybe. Uh, right, okay, so that is week uh, two. This is week three. The 4th to the 11th of December. So, again, just a modest warming, a slight warming there, stretching round from the North Atlantic and the Northern European side through Russia and over toward the Siberian side of, uh, of the North Pole. But it's not an SSW, isn't reaching the required level to get to that level. And that's more interesting. This is the 11th to the 18th of December. A much more significant warming taking place there. Now, remember, this is an anomaly, so we can't necessarily say that that is an S. SW on the temperature scale, I think that's going to 8 10 degrees above average. So, actually, that would not be an SSW 10 degrees above normal. It's not a sun traffic warning to get an SSW. You really need to lift the temperature around 50 degrees above normal. Unfortunately, the scale only goes up to 10 degrees or more above average in that dark maroon red shading. So, even if we get that, we can't ne necessarily say. That's an SSW. It would be helpful if this scale could be extended out, you know, to go to like 50 degrees above above north. Then we would know whether whether you know um, uh, the model is going for an S a genuine SSW. It did go for a significant warming of the stratosphere there over Siberia, however, over on the Siberian side of the North Pole in week five and week six. Uh, looks like that, and the warming continues and probably uh, strengthens a little bit as well. Certainly widens out, and it looks like it looks like it's moving in towards the uh, North Pole as well. As well, there. That's from the 18th of December to Christmas Day. Uh, again, on a temperature scale, it's not going to over 10 degrees above average, so not going to the deepest marine shading. So that would be short of a genuine SSW up to that point. Whether it would develop, of course, into a genuine SSW is speculative and it's interesting to ponder. But up to that point, uh, a significant warming stratosphere taking place probably causes a displacement of the polar vortex at its roots uh, rather than, you know, a, a split and, and total destruction of the polar vortex, I would imagine. Um, and the polar vortex will still be in business, will be, will be a little bit weakened, a little bit more displaced by that point. Now, another way of looking at uh, the polar vortex, of course, is through the zone of wind. So one way you can do it is through the temperature. So the temperature is basically a depiction of the polar vortex. These very cold temperatures here, the blue colours, that is a depiction of the PV. Um, but you can also do it through the zone of wind, which is, uh, a depiction of the strength of the polar vortex. So, so the cold temperature is basically the position of the polar vortex at its roots of the stratosphere at 10 HP over the pole. The zone of wind is a depiction of the strength of the, zone, of, the, of the polar vortex. And you can see, actually, at the moment, the zone of wind is very, very strong. Even though the temperature isn't, isn't that cold, so it's a little bit below average, the um, zone of wind, nevertheless, in the stratosphere, is virtually or is at record breaking levels, I think at the moment. So uh, we've, we've got a very, very strong zone of wind in the stratosphere. Not necessarily the troposphere. I think there's actually a bit of a disconnect between the strat and the troposphere at the moment. But at uh, the stratospheric level, very, very strong zone of wind. Now, as we get on the bottom of the chart, again, this comes from the ECFWF. This gets us to the last stages of December. You can see that as, as we go into the opening days of December, we actually get a weakening of zone of wind. But still strong, still strong on average. This, this is line here, this red line here, is like is like the average, I think. So it's still strong on average with the zone of wind as uh, we go into early December, albeit it is weaker where it currently is. Notice how this thick blue line, though, it's difficult to make out with all the other blue lines as we guess, but notice how this thick blue line 
is uh, falling away though as we go into the middle and then the second half of December. It isn't falling away to the point of a reversal zone win. So this line just here, this zero line, that's all important because any ensemble member that goes under there is going for an actual reversal zone of wings. And that is gold standard for saying that you've had an SSW split as well. Sometimes uh, we'll go with a genuine SSW. But as we saw in February this year, you don't always get split. Sometimes you just get a displacement event. But the gold standard way of being able to say that you have had, you haven't, you've had uh, a genuine SSW is to reverse zone of wings. In fact, you don't reverse it. Win, but you, I don't think you can say that you've had an SSW. There are a few ensemble members going for a genuine sudden stratospheric warming event, a genuine strap warm uh, event there with a reversal of Zona Wings. However, most of them are still falling a little bit short of that. These are outlier members. Most of the ensemble members are, are dropping down to that sort of level which is a significant weakening of the zone of wind, but is not a, a reversal and would not reach the, uh, what we would, um, would be required to say we've had an SSW. Nevertheless, still the same trend is continuing within the ECM ensembles here for, uh, at the very least, a quite a significant weakening of zone of winds via some kind of warming event through the middle and second half of December with the possibility, no more than that at the moment, that it might develop into a genuine SSW and, uh, you know, a, a, a genuine reversal of zone of winds. It does look as though right at the very end there are more ensemble members that are going into that sort of level as well, I think. So um, it might be more towards Christmas. It might be more towards Christmas that we get a genuine, you know, a genuine um, warming event, sun traffic warming event starting to gather place, which will be interesting. Christmas to New Year is a time um, when historically if we get an SSW, it does have quite significant impacts, you know, for, for um, the, the remainder of winter thinking particularly, you know, like um, 2012, so, so 2012, 2013, that SSW started around the new year. Uh, then there's also 1984. We got a very significant sun stratosphere one right at the end of the round new year of 1984, 1985. That set up uh, a very cold winter as well. So if the warming happens around Christmas, New Year time, often, um, not always, I think 2018 had a warming around Christmas, New Year, and it didn't do much at all. Uh, then again, it didn't really split the people, it just displaced it. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Christmas New Year, it's always quite interesting time to get an SSW. Anyway, uh, that's how it's all looking uh, this week. So that is your Strat Watch episode two. We will do it all over again next Wednesday. All looking rather interesting, but also a bit inconclusive at the As you expect, it's still very early on. It's, it's only the 15th of December. As we go through the winter, then the uh, stratospheric warming events become more probable so it, it actually as you go further on through the winter and get particularly when you get towards paper in the end of winter that is when uh the on average the, the sun traffic will warming events occur uh, more frequently. So we're going to carry on doing these every week, right way through the winter, and we'll see what happens. We will be having another look at the stratosphere again, though, in our winter update. We've got the 12th and penultimate winter 2020, uh, 2023, 24 um, <laughs> update. I don't think really said 2012, 2013, but uh, we've got the uh, 12th of winter 2023, 24 uh, update coming up for you on Sunday and within that of course we will be having a look at stratospheric data once more episode 3 though of Strat Watch will be released next week on Wednesday same time same place so I shall see you for that well of course I'll see you before then for the rest of our updates and uh, live streams and whatnot the live stream can be live at 6pm this evening they will live stream at 10 to 14 there and I shall see you a little bit later on for that one don't forget the 15th sort of Christmas countdown released straight after that just, uh, uh, just after 7pm for this one that's all for now and thanks for watching